This is a historic week. We will um, welcome Finland uh, as the 31st member of... Of all the countries Russia borders, Ukraine has attracted the most attention from Kremlin planners since the collapse of the Soviet Union. And today it is Moscow's greatest bane, as winning this war seems impossible. Finland, on the other hand, although the Russians claim they don't care about it, in fact its joining the NATO structures on April 4th will forever change the balance of power not only in Europe, but in the entire world. St. Petersburg is Russia's most important port. It's where the Baltic fleet is primarily based, and the city itself is strategic in terms of supplies to Kaliningrad. It is also the second largest metropolis in the Russian Federation, with a population of 5 million. Most importantly, it's Vladimir Putin's home city, so Finland becoming part of his hated North Atlantic alliance is like the proverbial shot in the cheek. And Finland now has the strongest friends and allies in the world. President Putin wanted to slam NATO's door shut. Today, we show the world that he failed that aggression and intimidation do not work. Instead of less NATO, he has achieved the opposite, more NATO. According to data for 2020, the port of St. Petersburg handled more than 62 million tons of cargo, accounting for about 11% of the total cargo turnover of Russia's ports. Moreover, it is responsible for 5% of the entire Russian economy and was targeted to be one of the key locations for China's Silk Road in terms of supplies to Western Europe. If we take a closer look at the map, St. Petersburg, like the Sawaki Gap, if there was a conflict between NATO and Russia, could be cut off almost immediately, and the main naval battles would take place in the Gulf of Finland. Any attempt at support from the rear would also be almost impossible, as the Danish Straits are still on the way, and Denmark itself is also a NATO member. Russia has thus been cut off from the West, and its imperial ambitions in the context of Central and Eastern Europe have already become a pipe dream. But it doesn't stop there. Членом Альянса станет Финляндия. Разумеется, все это создает риски существенного расширения конфликта, но на исход специальной операции не повлияет. В этих условиях мы принимаем ответные меры, отстаиваем безопасность союзного государства. Finland also borders the far northern port of Murmansk, which for the Kremlin was to be a new gateway to dominance in the Arctic region. This was to create a new military and trade corridor between Europe and Asia there in the future. Finland itself is also contributing its military experience and technology. So the previous idea of Finnish neutrality is gone, and this means new challenges for Putin and Xi Jinping and the global geopolitics they are pursuing. What else will be most important in connection with Finland's accession to NATO? That's what you'll find out later in this episode. I have a huge request to you. We have just launched this channel and we would like our videos to reach as many viewers as possible. For this, we also need your subscriptions and thumbs up. If this is not a problem for you and you want to be part of our community, then just do it. Now it's time to continue. Finland has 1,340 kilometers of border with Russia, so the length of Russia's shared borders with NATO member states has doubled. Until now, due to the extremely harsh climatic nature of the area, Good control of these borders has posed quite a problem for the Finns for decades. Historically, the war between Finland and the Soviet Union broke out in November 1939, when the USSR claimed the territories you see on the map from Finland. On top of that, the Soviets also wanted the use of Finnish ports in the Baltic Sea. The Russians had a significant advantage in numbers of troops and equipment, but the Finnish army nevertheless successfully defended its territory through effective war tactics. The war ended in March 1940 with the signing of peace in Moscow. Finland was forced to cede areas of Karelia to the USSR, as well as give way on the use of ports on the Gulf of Finland, but the country retained its independence, and the Russians lost the conflict with about 200,000 casualties, while Finland lost about 25,000 people. Obviously, with a population of several million, this is a huge loss, but with the capabilities of the Soviet army, it really isn't much. It was a setback that directly later contributed to the Third Reich's attack on the USSR, as well as Hitler's cooperation with the Helsinki government. This is what the Russians have feared most in recent years, that is a renewed environment like that of the Second World War. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov warned that Russia would be closely watching what happens in Finland, describing NATO enlargement as a violation of our security and national interests. Североатлантический будет э, эксплуатировать территорию Финляндии в плане размещения там оружия, систем, инфраструктуры, которая будет впритык к нашим границам, потенциально нам угрожать. В зависимости от этого будут приниматься меры. 
Putin himself, meanwhile, has repeatedly changed his mind on the issue over the past few years. Before the war in Ukraine, he did not allow Finland in NATO at all. Now, on the other hand, a month before the publication of my video, he spoke a little differently. Теперь в случае размещения там военных контингентов и инфраструктуры мы вынуждены будем отвечать зеркально и создавать такие же угрозы для территории, откуда создают. As you can see, there are now even among the Kremlin elite conflicting accounts of what happened. Nevertheless, from a geopolitical point of view, this is a real game changer. According to estimates for 2021, there are a total of about 1,100,000 Russians living in the Baltic states of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. In Estonia, Russians make up about 24% of the population. In Latvia, about 27%, and in Lithuania, about 5%. Many Russian nationals living in these countries hold Russian citizenship, which is sometimes a source of political tension between Russia and the Baltics. With Finland joining the alliance, it is St. Petersburg that becomes a potential target for attack from both sides, and the Baltics can quickly receive support from both Poland and Finland. So the effective defense of these small states has increased several fold, and a potential attempt to initiate a conflict similar to the one in Ukraine would have dire consequences for the Kremlin. Finland, becoming the 31st member of NATO, has the world's 51st army, which, according to the Global Firepower Ranking assessing the military potential of 145 countries around the world, places it at the level of Denmark, Ethiopia and Venezuela, among others. The Finnish army has about 24,000 soldiers, 900,000 conscripts, and has 166 aircraft, 20 helicopters, 239 tanks, and 5,368 armored vehicles. It is worth noting that Finland spends relatively little on armaments when looking at other members of the alliance. However, Finland's contribution to NATO's capabilities should not be underestimated, because as I've already mentioned, it increases the Baltic state's ability to defend themselves. Experts point out that Finland is strengthening NATO in proportion to its population, with an immediate mobilization capacity of 270,000 reservists in wartime. The country has nearly a million people in reserve capable of military service, as well as a total defense doctrine that involves every public sector in the self-defense effort. Moreover, Finland has compulsory military service for men, but women also join. Suomalaisilla on oikeus ja velvollisuus puolustaa maataan. Miehillä se on sananmukaisesti asevelvollisuus. Asevelvollisuuden tunnetuin osuus on varusmiespalvelus, joka suoritetaan tavallisesti parikymppisenä. Lähes vuoden koulutuksen saavat johtajat ja erityistehtäviin sijoitettu miehistö, muilla palvelus kestää viisi ja puoli tai kahdeksan ja puoli kuukautta. Palvelus alkaa tammikuussa tai heinäkuussa. Naiset voivat myös suorittaa vapaaehtoisen asepalveluksen. Heidän täytyy olla 18-29-vuotiaita Suomen kansalaisia, joiden terveys ja muut henkilökohtaiset ominaisuudet sopivat varusmiespalveluun. This populationally small country of only 5 million literally could stop Russia and prevent it from doing anything in the Baltic Sea. Now if Sweden, whose candidacy is still blocked by Hungary and Turkey, also joins the alliance, then the Baltic Sea will turn into a closed body of water for NATO. In the event of any armed conflict, the Russians would almost lose any chance of defending the Kaliningrad region, which is slowly ceasing to be Moscow's proverbial unsinkable aircraft carrier. Also taking into account the fact that the average depth of the Baltic Sea is only 54 meters then, with the existence of the so-called NATO umbrellas in the Denmark Strait and the Finnish Strait, the chances that Russian submarines would pass underwater for support are unlikely. These would almost immediately be picked up by radar. It is also a gigantic failure for the Kremlin that Finland's joining NATO significantly reduces the capabilities of the Murmansk region, which has become Russia's most important region militarily since the Soviet era. In such an unfriendly area, there are things that cause great intelligence interest. It's all due to the Soviet military, which located its most powerful naval force, the Northern Fleet, in the Murmansk area. At the height of its power in the 1980s, it had more than 100 nuclear submarines, including many carrying ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads. For such an armada, 
numerous bases were needed, which were built in bays similar to Norwegian fjords. Shipyards and laboratories were built there, which were of crucial importance in the context of defense and potential military action by the Kremlin. However, the Russians did not necessarily think through the logistics of the site well. Well, there is only one R-21 highway and only one railroad leading to the bases located there. With Finland's accession to NATO, this key supply route is only 150 kilometers from the alliance's borders. In theory, therefore, NATO artillery alone could reach this route, preventing Russia from waging war against the West. Finland has one of the strongest artillery forces in Europe. It has a number of missile systems, including Korea's K-9 Thunder howitzers, among others. Helsinki has two S-4 Carnation howitzers, as well as possessing MRLS self-propelled rocket launchers and the NASAMS-2 defense system. The Finns also have very short-range RBS-70, Stinger, and self-propelled Krotal NG systems. The Finns also have hundreds of Spike MR and LR handheld launchers, tow 2 and 3000 NLAW disposable kits. Finland also intends to buy as many as 64 of the latest F-35 fighters from the United States. So in a sense, with the capabilities of the Finnish military, this country could be compared to Europe's Israel. Despite its small size, it would be a serious adversary for Russia, whose invasion could end the other way than it did during World War II. Finland would regain its disputed territories, which it lost almost a century ago. The Norwegians are also pleased with the new expansion. They are the ones who have so far patrolled the cold Arctic waters together with the U.S. and Icelandic militaries. With Finland's accession, its military will gain access to Norwegian ports jointly patrolling the northern waters. Now this was impossible, as Finland has no direct connection to the Arctic Ocean. This is not good news for China, which based on Russia's north wanted to build a new Silk Road to Europe while cooperating with the Russians on military issues. The Chinese are taking a serious interest in the Arctic and its seemingly unfriendly territories. For years, the Chinese Communist Party has positioned the region as one of the key ones for future geopolitical aspirations. Beneath the frozen Arctic soil are vast deposits of phosphate, bauxite, diamonds, iron ore, silver and gold, copper and zinc. With global warming, these riches will be more readily available, and with Russia's weakening position, it can be expected that the Chinese will want to take advantage of these deposits in some way. China is a stakeholder uh, in Arctic affairs, and a geographic, geographically uh, a near Arctic state, uh, as stated in our white paper, uh, uh, China's policy on uh, the Arctic. The development of the Arctic is uh, uh, closely linked with China. The policy goals of uh, China on the Arctic are to understand, uh, to protect, to develop and, particip and to participate in the governance of the Arctic. Putting it all together, Finland joining NATO may not change the course of the war in Ukraine at the moment, but going forward it's a brilliant move in terms of increasing global security, whether talking here about the eastern flank, Western Europe or North America. Judge for yourself this move on the part of the North Atlantic Alliance. For my part, that's it for today. Stay tuned and remember to subscribe. Cheers.